Hello everyone, welcome to Switch Up. Today I've got a physical pickups video for you. I'm going to show you the last 10 games I've bought for the Switch in physical form. Now this is the first video of this type for quite a few months, I think since about February time, for obvious reasons. And most of these games I bought before the lockdown, although I've picked a couple up recently that's brought it up to 10. And there's a nice mixture of different games here for you to see, including quite an interesting import game that I'll show at the end. I also just want to ask quickly, if you are interested in seeing some of the other games that I buy for other modern consoles or retro games as well, I'd be more than happy to show those towards the end of a video like this, maybe after the credits as a little additional. If you'd rather it stay just Switch, that's fine. Just let me know in the comments what the general consensus is. Anyway, today's episode is all about the Switch, so let's have a look at these pickups. The first game I picked up in this time then was Diblob 2, which was a game I actually reviewed for the channel a while ago now. I think we only had about 5 subscribers at the time, I might be exaggerating a little bit, I think we had about 6. But I found this game for £7.95 online and couldn't resist it for that price to add it to the physical collection. This is an action platform game where you have to liberate the citizens of the city that you are in by putting the colour back into the world, and it's a really chilled out game. I've been playing it with my daughter, although the multiplayer mode isn't the full game, so we generally play one player and just pass the pad along. You have to mix primary colours to then paint certain buildings in those colours, and it was nice because a few days after that, I was actually doing some painting with my daughter, and she was asking how we make green, and I could say to her, how did we make it in the blob game? And she actually remembered through that and said, yeah, blue and yellow. So there you go, games can be educational sometimes. The next game I got was Zombieland Double Tap Road Trip, based of course on the film. Now I've got no interest in the film at all, I saw the first one and thought it was fine I suppose, the Bill Murray bit was quite funny, but I bought this really because I really like twin stick shooters. This one's enjoyable enough, although it does have the most bizarre mechanic I've ever seen in a twin stick shooter, and that's an escort mission where you have to keep an old lady safe from the hordes of zombies that are coming at you at the time. And of course she's incredibly slow and generally twin stick shooters are all about fast paced high octane action. So it's very very odd having to slow yourself down to try and keep this lady safe. Does it work? No, not really. It's incredibly annoying, but it's something different, I suppose. It's one of those games that had I reviewed it, it wouldn't have got a particularly good score. It's not a great game, but it's a guilty pleasure for a genre that I do really enjoy. The next game then was Warriors Orochi 4 Ultimate, and as you may be able to see from the footage here, this is actually the German edition, although it does of course have an English language option as well. Now I actually received this when we went to a Koi Tecmo night in London, again way back in February I believe it was, before the lockdown, and it's a game we have reviewed on the channel, a few of these we've reviewed, and I will put links to the reviews in the top in comment. Now unfortunately when Mark and I went to this event, we just couldn't get there early enough, we weren't able to, so we missed a large portion of it, although we did spend the rest of the night playing Golden Axe on an arcade machine in the pub that we were in, and actually finished the game which was very cool, so every cloud I suppose. Warriors Orochi is of course a Musu game, and there are a couple of these on the Switch, and I do own a few of them. You have I suppose the more mainstream or popular ones being the Hyrule and Fire Emblem Warriors games because of the IPs they use, but then of course you have others such as Dynasty Warriors 8 and Knights of Azure 2, perhaps not as well known to non-fans of the genre, but excellent games that people really should check out too. The next game I bought then, and again this was only £7.95, this is Sphinx and the Cursed Mummy. Now I haven't actually played this one yet, you'll see again from the footage it's not opened. It's one of the few of these 10 that I've not got round to yet, but I do remember this game from back in the day being on the GameCube, and it was one that always intrigued me, I just never got round to getting. So I always wanted to pick it up on the Switch, and I'm happy to have finally done so. This is a 3D platformer which has had the words hidden gem banded around regarding it. Those words obviously get used a lot these days, but I am looking forward to diving into it and seeing if that statement holds true. 
This was one of three games that THQ Nordic ported to the Switch in quite a short space of time quite early in the system's life cycle. And one of the other games was The Raven Remastered, which is a game I picked up in a previous pickups video, so I'll put the links to those in that top pin comment as well. The next game is a game called Gianna Sisters Twisted Dreams, which is a really good 2D platformer. Now the Gianna Sisters have quite a history, they go all the way back to the Commodore 64. In fact the game they starred in on that system was inspired, shall we say, by Super Mario Brothers. I mean very heavily inspired. And not only that, but the developers also called out Nintendo in terms of the marketing they did for the game. Having a bit of a sly dig at the Mario Brothers game in the process, and Nintendo actually had the game withdrawn from shelves for being too similar to their property, so it backfired tremendously on them. The IP lay dormant for years and years before ironically it reappeared on, of all systems, the Nintendo DS, and this reimagining of the series has come out since. I have it on the PS4 as well as now obviously this Switch version. You can switch between the two sisters and they play quite differently to each other, and switching between them warps the world that you are in as well. It has a really beautiful aesthetic to it, and is actually a very good platformer and it's one that you can pick up for dirt cheap. Again, I think I bought this for about £7 from a website called thegamecollection.net where quite a few of these came from and they just have insanely good deals at times so they're well worth keeping an eye on. The next game I picked up was a game called Redeemer Another one I'd had my eye on for a little while, and this again was one that Mark reviewed for us on the channel, and he enjoyed it, but found the performance was pretty ropey at that time. Now it has received a patch since then, and runs a whole bunch better these days, with performance for the most part averaging between 30 to 50 frames per second. Now I've only played about an hour of it, so I don't know if it gets any worse later on, but I am very much enjoying this game. It's a top-down brawler slash twin-stick shooter at times, and I just really enjoy these sort of games. I always have done. I can forgive some technical flaws for games like this because I just find them so enjoyable, albeit, like I said, this one has been patched since. It's quite a brutal game. There's a lot of blood and guts, and whilst you can stealth your way through some sections, to be honest, it's all about the over-the-top action of just taking everyone out. And next is another platformer and another one I've reviewed. This is Ukulele and the Impossible Lair. This was a game I thought very highly of when I reviewed it. I think I gave it 90% or something like that, high 80s if not. And again, it's one I wanted physically. The interesting hook with this game is that you actually start on the last level and it is, as the title would suggest, impossible. Well, just about anyway. And what you have to do is visit the levels of the game and pick up a squad of bees known as the Bee Talion. And each of these will then act as an extra hit point in that last level and you can try the last level again anytime you wish and it has a score by David Wise an absolute legend in the industry when it comes to composing video game music this edition came with some art cards again I'll show you them on the screen now and what really bugs me about this is one of my pet peeves is that they're too big to fit in the box without wanting to sound ungrateful I'm sure I will but I hate it when companies give away something that doesn't fit in the box it just defies all logic I can't open them now because they'll just get lost and the switch cases of course have those little clamps in them that something would have fit in quite nicely it just bugs me but 15 pounds for this game is a very good price if you can find it for anywhere around that it's definitely worth picking up The next game then is Assassin's Creed Remastered, which I picked up from a shop over here called Argos for £17.99. Now I did buy Assassin's Creed 3 for the Wii U, but never actually got around to playing it. I also bought 4 and I did play and finish that one. I know some people consider 3 one of the weaker entries in the franchise, but the setting has always interested me from a historical point of view, and I was quite happy to pick it up for that price and give it a go. Now I know there were performance issues when this game first released on the Switch, but there is a patch available now, and it runs at a consistent 30 frames per second, at least as far as I've seen so far from the few hours I've played. 
I do have a tendency to buy Assassin's Creed games and just not play them. They're such big time sinks that I really have to be in the mood to try them. But like I said, I've played a couple of hours of this one so far and I have enjoyed what I've played. Having it on a portable system definitely helps, so that's where the Switch is ideal for games such as these. The only other one of these 10 that I haven't played this month yet then, this is Katamari Damacy Reroll. This game is an import, it's not the one I mentioned at the beginning though, this one is an American version. We didn't get a physical release of this game here in Europe. I paid £32.99 for this, quite an expensive price, but of course being an import you do find yourself having to pay that bit more. But it is a game I really wanted to buy, A because I wanted to try it, I've never played it before, and B I love the fact that the Switch is region free and I do try to buy as many games from other regions as I can if they don't get a release over here. Whilst I've never played this game I do know a fair bit about it and the premise just looks a lot of fun and I'm actually really looking forward to diving into this one. I just want to clear a few other games off first before I open it so I can dedicate some proper time to it. And the final game for this video then, this is that import that I mentioned, this is Tokyo 2020, the official video game, based of course on the Olympic Games. Now this is interesting for a few reasons, first of all obviously it didn't get a release over here in Europe, or the West in general for that matter, and this is an Asian copy, I believe it's Korean, I may be wrong. But of course the Tokyo 2020 Olympics have been postponed until next year, so it's just quite an interesting game to pick up from that perspective, but the game itself is actually very good. It plays in the spirit of something like track and field, tapping the B button to do the 100 meters, that sort of thing, and also has other events like the boxing, which is actually very good. And I would love to see a full boxing game on the Switch using a similar mechanics. You basically use the left and right sticks to control your left and right arms, blocking is done with the R, and you sidestep with the Z, L and Z, R buttons as well. There's been an update since the game came out, which has added four new events, being uh, Rugby Sevens, Judo, Climbing, and the Relay, I think it was. And it also has things like football, table tennis, which is a lot of fun, regular tennis, hammer throw. It's actually a really good game, and one that many people probably didn't even know about. Now, because the Tokyo 2020 games are keeping their name despite the fact they're being played next year, there's a good chance that this game may just be released as it is now in the West next year instead but it was one I wanted to pick up just in case it kind of disappears off the face of the earth, and I'm really happy to have it. So there you are, there's 10 games that I've picked up in the last few months now, four months I guess, and I have actually picked a couple up already for the next video, and strangely enough so far they've all actually been limited editions, so that next episode will be quite a limited edition heavy episode. Do let me know if you'd like to see other games included in this that aren't for the Switch. As I say, I collect a lot of retro games as well. Just throw a comment in and let me know what you think about that. And please do, as I always say, let me know of any games you've picked up physically. I love reading about other games people have picked up, especially if they're import games. Anyway, a quick thank you to our Patreons, as always, for your continued support. And to each and every one of you, of course, for watching our videos. Take care, stay safe, and until next time, happy gaming. Thank you.